responding to player feedback is obviously a big part of the Sea of Thieves, right? It's something that we've always talked about, about how important it is that we get the game into players' hands early. Um, we can start testing features and testing how things are going. We're very much still building that core feature set. So although we're in that technical alpha phase and we're very much testing the, the kind of early game loop, we're very much looking at are the features behaving as we're expecting? And as long as they broadly are, we're like, cool, great. Yeah. And we're moving on to building the next part of the core feature set and the next part. And so as the project moves forward um, and that feature set fills out, the kind of the balance of how we deal with feedback and how we prioritize it is probably going to start skewing a little bit towards yeah. more and more kind of feedback orientated and player orientated. Yeah, so um, after uh, I've collected feedback of uh, what people are saying in the forums or like condense it down into um, specific uh, feedback points, like someone said the blunderbuss um, uh, the, the, it's too yeah. too slow to reload based on like the amount of people that have agreed with a certain piece of feedback or you know have responded to that piece of feedback we have an intensity number and then we'll go back into the um, database of all our tasks and then we'll add a feedback item and that will have an intensity number attached to it so based on that we can have um, say the designers for example they can then look at that and say okay so um, like you say like the blunt bus feedback that's really high in intensity maybe we should look at this yeah. so it's it's quite a granular way of just basically understanding what are the part, the biggest talking points in the community and i think just having it as just a hard, like a hard number um really helps oh it um, does it does because yeah. because our, our roadmap is very visual in the way that we present it yeah. right each kind of feature or, or user story it, it, it looks a little bit like a post-it right doesn't it on our, on our roadmap but yeah and you so you can see them laid out in terms of each delivery that we've got planned and two of the ones with highest kind of the highest numbers that one is the voice work that we've got going yeah. on now about how better to kind of display that people are using voice for people who aren't you know yeah. like we can give them feedback as to why if they've not got a mic plugged in or they're mic's not functioning properly or whatever, or they're, or they're not set up. On the other hand, there's um, the non-verbal communication system has almost equal amounts of points, yep. I think, right? Um, it's intensity. And, you know, and, and it's us, it, it's our skill as developers to kind of go, what's our priorities? Um, what are the things we feel are most important at this yep. stage to kind of go ahead and prioritize? And, and that's probably one of the most um, challenging and has a lot of debate internally in the yep. studio, right? But it's really cool that we've got this system that allows us to see that it's important. So we'll never forget because yep. it's got this big, <laughs> big yeah, flashing exactly. number on yeah, it, right? Exactly. So, yeah. It's true. Well, a month or two ago now in the forums where people felt we weren't being open and transparent enough you know so we did a post um, about one of the top talking points which was the personal combat yep so, uh, and actually recently mike chapman our lead designer did another post about first versus third person and the yep. kind of design thinking behind why we want to go first person why the immersion is so important to us you know that's very much based on feedback from the community right yep. about like how we're interacting the kind of information we're sharing and i think there's been a really positive reaction to both of those posts and it's definitely something we want to do moving forward right that's quite an easy way for us to actually get out there and reach a broad set of people and, and answer some of the top talking points yeah right? um so yeah there's lots of different ways we can react to feedback and questions yeah i think i think so because responding to people uh, and letting them know we are listening to them and just trying to see what we can actually answer right now uh it's just as important and seeing um you know the amount of reaction like, i'll just thank you like people yeah. saying oh <laughs> thanks you know it, it clears things up for people with, with a game like the, the game we're making um Obviously, there's all the work that uh, you know us as a, um, a dev team are putting in, but I think without the players, it's you yeah, know it's meaningless. It's right? meaningless, yeah. isn't it? If you so, don't have players playing your game or caring about it, yeah, yeah, what, exactly. what's the point? Right? Just you know, don't be shy. Basically, you yeah. know, just just send you know send your feedback. It, it can be on our videos. It can be on the game. We want to hear it. We're creating this game for players. We're going to be listening to them, and we're going to be shaping this and adjusting things and, and tweaking things moving forward based on player feedback and, and what players do in our world. Right? Yeah, hundred percent. So this this game is it's it's for the players right? yeah it is, is, it is. is that sony's tagline I don't <laughs> oh, oh well, well. Oh, well. <laughs>